Tax season is right around the corner. I cannot believe the year flew by so fast. It seemed like just yesterday we did our taxes. Here we are again, getting ready to do our taxes. Um, we should be getting our tax forms in the mail, hopefully by the end of this month. Usually we usually get them uh, by the end of January. So, but some of you guys are probably saying, hey, I still didn't get my taxes from last year. I filed last year and didn't get my taxes. And for whatever reason, well, I know the reason. So there's been a big delay with the whole IRS tax refunds, tax returns, because with all the stimulus and all this extra money from here and there, and they just did not have enough staff to accommodate everybody. Just all these people who are filing their taxes, amended returns, everything is just one big mess. The other problem is that I don't understand why the IRS has not updated their computer system. They have very old outdated computer systems. So it's really slowing everything down and people are really fed up. So again, a lot of you guys that's watching, you probably have not even still received your taxes yet. But I wanna talk about what you can do with your tax return when you do get it because if you think about it, when you file your taxes for 2021, there's still a good chance that you may get your taxes that you filed for the year before. It may all come in one lump sum. Hopefully it'll come in one lump sum. But I'm gonna to talk to you about what you can do, what you can invest in with your tax return. <music> What's up, YouTube? This is Todd. Todd and Tasha. Tasha is not here. She is getting ready to have a baby. Like I said last week, any day now. So you just never know. Um, really expecting that. Expecting this new child. Very excited. Uh, no more kids after that. So I'm done. We're done. No more. But this tax money will come in handy because it would definitely help out. It would definitely help a lot of you guys out too because you may have children or you may you know, want to invest in something. So first, before I get started in this, please guys, if you decided that you like this video, whether it's the beginning, during, or at the end, please give it a thumbs up. Like, subscribe, share all across social media. If you don't have social media, share anyway because that, again, helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Now, some of these things I have already talked about, but my main one that I'm gonna focus on, I'm gonna say that for last. So there's one huge thing that I definitely wanna talk about that you can invest in. But so I'm just gonna recap a little bit of what I've talked about in earlier videos, of things that you can invest in. One of the things is stocks. Stocks have been popping for umpteen years. Stocks have been popping for just, I don't know, so many years, I can't even just think of the number but stocks is where it's at stocks is really great you have like apple stocks you have google stock stocks tesla you have so many different stocks and up and coming stocks just everything and it's good for the long term okay so you invest now um you know 5 10 15 20 years 30 years down the line you know it can yield you a real nice good return if you play your cards right okay because again with stocks it is, you know, kind of up and down as well, but generally the uh, NASDAQ and the US 30 uh, is like a roller coaster, but the roller coaster is kind of like on the positive side for the most part, because if you look at the charts, you'll see like there's usually an uptrend with the US 30 and, um, you know, the NASDAQ, the tech stocks, all that stuff. So, but sometimes the stock seems to have a mind of its own and it just can kind of like go up and down, bounce around. So stocks is one good thing to invest in for the future, not only your future, but if you have children again uh, for the future of your children, that'd be awesome as well. So um, I would, you know, highly urge you guys to just like make sure you research, you know, all the different stocks 
and just kind of like look at the data, the past data, the data now, um, you know, just the history of the company, just to kind of see, you know, what you're investing into. So that's one good way um, of investing your tax return money is in stocks. So the other thing that I, again, talked about previously was cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is just really, really so popular. I really wish that I didn't know anything about Bitcoin. Um, I, I can't really remember when it started. I think it may have been around like, I don't know, 2008, 2009. If I'm wrong, somebody can, you know, definitely correct me down in the comment section. But I just wish I would have known that I could have got in and then I would have been real good now. Um, so, yeah, cryptocurrency is really good. And there's some benefits, too, with investing in uh, cryptocurrency. And let's talk about decentralization or a decentralized market. What is a decentralized market? In a decentralized market, technology enables investors to deal directly with each other instead of operating from within a centralized exchange. Virtual markets that use decentralized currency or cryptocurrencies are examples of decentralized markets. Now, how do decentralized markets work? So a decentralized market uses various digital devices to communicate and display bid ask prices in real time. So in this way, buyers and sellers and dealers do not need to be located in the same place to transact securities. So basically you're cutting out third parties, you're cutting out the middle man there. And you don't have to worry about big governments regulating, at least big governments regulating yet. So now in a decentralized market, it contains digital technology that allows buyers and sellers of securities to deal directly with each other instead of meeting in a traditional exchange. So the common example of a decentralized market is real estate, where buyers deal directly with sellers. So a newer example is the virtual markets and blockchain system, which use cryptocurrency. Now this is good because it makes it harder for hackers to get into your information and hack everything to steal all your information. It makes it very, very hard for them to do it, you know, because of the complex uh, mathematical puzzles that's aimed uh, specifically to make it hard for hackers to steal, you know, consumer personal information. So it is good in terms of security for the most part. So now there's a lot of high volatility in the markets in the crypto markets so you can gain a lot of money the way it moves then you can also lose a lot of money so for instance an example would be back in i believe it was may when uh tesla ceo elon musk announced that tesla will no longer be accepting bitcoin as a mode of payment due to like some type of environmental concerns that he was having so then what followed that was a huge dramatic fall in price and um, it basically like 365 billion worth being like wiped out in the uh, whole cryptocurrency market within that you know entire week. So that was really bad. And there is a uh, potential for a lot of scams because with a lot of these coins, there's people just making their own coins and making it seem like it's maybe Ethereum or Bitcoin when it really isn't just to get your money. So you have to watch out and definitely research all the coins that you want to invest in. You want to make sure that it's the legit coin, the real authentic thing. Now, keep in mind that um, there is a ton of cryptocurrencies that is out on the trading fields right now. There is so many, 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 many cryptocurrencies. I can't even keep up with all of them. It's just so many. And I'm always getting emails from like Coinbase and other platforms that I'm on telling you um, there's a new uh, cryptocurrency that's arrived, new this, new that. Just so many new cryptos that's arrived. I can't keep up with everything. So you want to just, you know, research everything that you can with crypto, because like I was going to say, all of the crypto is not going to make it. Okay, I can, wish I can sit up here and say which crypto is going to make it, but all of them really isn't going to make it, to be honest about it. So there's some that's just not going to survive. Some are just going to fall by the wayside. Some is just going to keep on booming. So we already know that Bitcoin is basically really doing this thing. 
um, Ethereum, all that. And there's another one, XRP Ripple. So uh, I'm not sure if you guys know the whole deal with that um, as far as the uh, exchange, but there's been like a lot of uh, controversy with that to where the Security Exchange Commission has pulled um, you know, XRP where most uh, platforms are not offering it, but it stated that it was said that in March, they're gonna make a decision whether or not um, they're gonna just put it back on the trading platform so people can trade again like coinbase does not offer um xrp so but just think about it if you invest in xrp right now it, it is a big risk because well the risk is there's a benefit and then there's um a risk so first the risk is if you like invest in it now uh it doesn't really matter how much you invest you can like really easily lose money because once the um, Security Exchange Commission makes their decision on XRP, if they say, hey, OK, we're going to just remove it off the platforms, period, done forever, then it's going to tank. You're going to lose your money or lose a lot of money, depending on especially how much you have in there. But if you invest in there and um, they come to a decision in March and say, hey, OK, well, we see that. Um, you know, the owners of XRP did not do anything, you know, wrong. They didn't violate any um, laws or anything like that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to, you know, um, allow XRP to, you know, float around on the platforms again so people can trade. And if that happens, and I'm hoping it happens, it does happen, then you're going to see XRP shoot up. It's going to skyrocket now. So I want you guys really think about this and be careful too. Now, although there's a good chance that if they allow XRP to move forward in a skyrocket, I would take that money and run. Okay, pay close attention because it's not going to last for a long time. So what I'm saying is that usually like in the market, if there's some good news, like with Tesla or something, you're going to get a good um, hit to the you know upside. You're going to get a huge hit. And you're going to notice that your money is going to be really accumulating. And so when you see that, don't just be real careful. You don't want to get greedy, too greedy or greedy at all. And just say, OK, I'm just going to keep it. In. I'm going to keep it in there. When you're in that profit, I, if it was, you know, me, I would, you know, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lock my profit in. I'm going to take my profit. And then so when it goes back down and I'm not obviously I don't know how far it's going to go back down, but then I'll probably get in again or something like that. But um, just take your profits, guys, like with this, because still cryptocurrency, it still can move up and down. And, and the other thing with cryptocurrency just, you know, worries me is that, uh, how shall I say this? It is just super, I don't know, it's, I think it's, I feel like it's too volatile for me. It's just so up and down. So like, look at, um, I don't even have my phone with me, but look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just to me is so up and down like one minute it is like 50 some thousand next minute it's like dropping down to 42,000 then it's back to almost 50,000 then it's down to like 30 some thousand it's I don't know I'm just really I'm not really 100% sure about certain cryptos even like Bitcoin um, they say that Bitcoin is going to eventually shoot up to hundred thousand that is possible but just lately for me it's been kind of too wishy-washy too up and down too flaky but overall crypto um could be a good investment you know research um the different cryptocurrencies and um you know just decide what you want to um, invest in now this is the whole point in the video what i really want to talk about the number one thing that you can take your tax money, your tax dollars, you know, your hard earned money. You can put it into real estate. Now, I know you heard this stuff before, but guys, listen, real estate is where it's at. I was in uh, real estate. Actually, I had investment properties. I'm going to actually make a whole nother video about that. I had investment properties in the city of Detroit of all places and ladies and gentlemen again I had to tell you what exactly happened because that was a totally different experience but real estate is where it's at guys 
So look, there's a few ways you can do it. I mean, there's a lot of ways, but I'm just gonna tell you quickly about a few ways that you can do it. So when you get your tax money, depending on how much you're getting, you can go online and you can look, whether it's in your hometown, the city that you live in, you can look all across the country, around the country, you can find good deals on you know, HUD homes. So you can find a HUD home where you can pay cash for it, guys. This is real cool. Find a HUD home. Make sure, obviously, you do your, you know, due diligence, you know, uh, research, research everything, um, see how bad the property is, what type of work, see if it's manageable, see if the property is doable. So you can like buy that property outright, guys, and really fix it up. If you don't really have the money to fix it up, you can, you know, hook up with like different banks. And you know, get the money, borrow the money. Of course, your credit, you know, has to be you know pretty decent to do that. But there's still ways, workarounds of the system where you can get into that. But guys, take your tax return money, buy a property, you can buy the whole thing outright, fix it up, rent it out. You can have you know tenants and people stand there. They pay you monthly rent. You don't have any mortgage or anything. You're doing is paying the taxes, so you're good on that. So you're accumulating that money monthly, guys. So you take that money for one, you reinvest in the property with that money. That's number one. You invest because you don't want to have tenants living in a, a crap hole. You want to make sure that the property is nice. So the other thing is you want to, you know, take that money, um, the money that you have left over. You want to invest it in other properties, guys invested in other properties. So you can look around the country or again in your city and state and find other properties where you can purchase outright. So that'd be awesome if you can find other properties, you know, to invest in where you can just pay cash. The other way you can do it is, of course, going uh, the traditional way, like in conventional uh, mortgage. So you can do that. Now, conventional mortgage is good to do that because Unlike FDA, they want you to be FDA. They uh, want you to be in the house for like, I think, two or three years and you can't like rent it out. But conventional loan, you can rent it out like right away. So uh, if you want to go that route, you can go ahead and get a mortgage on a nice property. It doesn't have to be like the biggest thing it can be something small. Um, it can be like really nice and fix it up. Whatever repairs need to be done, you can get that like really nice. Have it looking like a nice birthday present. Rent that out and you can charge more money because chances are if you're going to get a mortgage on a house, the house is going to be just really nice. And, the, you know, of course, by you putting more money into the house, more work into it, you can really fix it up to make it look better than what it was when you even bought it too and throw tennis in there. So you can just keep doing that, guys, and getting properties and taking that money, investing in properties and buying more. So then the other thing is, oh, yeah, so FHA, so again, like I said, you can do an FHA loan. Um, it's cool because FHA loan, all you have to do is have like 3.5% uh, down on that. But then your uh, PMI is going to be like super high. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, all you need is a 580 credit score. Uh, conventional mortgage, uh, you need like around 620, 640 or something like that. So but so if you want to go the route, if you don't really have much money to put down, you can go the FHA route if you want. Um, but again, like I said, you have to wait. But some people, they know how to work the system. I'm not telling you to do that, but they work the system and they still end up getting people to uh, they still end up getting tenants in the house, even though it's an FHA loan. So you can do that. And of course, the FHA loan limits is up. Uh, so here in California, the um, FHA loan limit is nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars for a single and for a uh multiplex uh, or triple plex uh fourplex or whatever i'm trying to say it is i think it's well over a million dollars i'll put it like that well over a million dollars i don't have the exact number so just whatever way works for you just do your research um, check it out, see which uh, route you want to go. But guys, um, investing in real estate is the way to go. And I'm going about, I'm going to start back investing in real estate myself, actually. So it's been a while, but like I said, I'm going to make another video um, regarding what happened when Tosh and I was investing in uh, real estate in Michigan. So, so keep in mind that some of your tax refund checks may not necessarily be enough to cover said real estate. So 
what I was kind of saying earlier in the video that you might want to consider checking out maybe a loan, a small business loan from uh, a financial institution. So you can check out a credit union, maybe Bank of America, Wells Fargo, one of those, and sit down and talk to them about maybe acquiring a small business loan. So you can take your tax refund check money and you can add it with whatever loan that you acquire from those banks and you can purchase land. You can even purchase land overseas, not just here in the US, but you can purchase land overseas, ladies and gentlemen. And you will be surprised at the good hot deals you can find in places like Turkey, in places like the Philippines, in places like Mexico. There's a lot of deals. Thailand, there's like waterfront uh, property over in Thailand that you can acquire where the land is cheap compared to here in the United States. So what you can do, you can purchase that land, sit on it for a while, and just maybe wait for a developer to come along and say, hey, I want to develop maybe villas on this property, apartment complex. I want to build uh, maybe malls, shopping centers, or something like that. So then in order for that developer to actually build on your land, they need to acquire that land from you the owner. So you may have a set price in your in your mind of what you want to sell that land for. You may want to sell it for maybe 2.5 million, 3 million, 5 million. And it also depends uh, on the market, what the uh, market rates are going for over there um, and what's in the area. So that's a whole nother video right there. So you get with the um, developer, you guys talk, negotiate a deal, and hopefully you guys can work out a deal to where he will purchase, he or she will purchase that land from you. So, or and there's even times where maybe that they will work something out and you guys can work something out to where, okay, they don't buy the land outright, but they kind of basically rent the land from you. So whatever um, profits that they get from the development on that land, they give you a certain percentage each month. So that's another thing that you can think about as well too. Now, a quick bonus here for those of who do not you know, necessarily have the money to invest in real estate or may kind of want to just wait a little bit until we can you know, get money to get maybe deals or bigger deals. You can take you know, your money and actually invest in small things like ATM machines and vending machines. So how this really works is that you can go online, you can find deals and use ATM and vending machines and then you can call up different stores and businesses, barbershops, hair salons, and you can ask them about getting your ATM and vending machine in their shop, in their salon, find out um, what it is that you need to do. So more than likely, they're gonna uh, ask for maybe a certain percentage of your sales. So that's a, something that you can also check out and consider as well. Okay, I wanna show you guys just an example of like real estate you can get. So this real estate is over in Thailand. So there's a lot of real estate. There's real estate in uh, Vietnam, but this particular real estate is over in Thailand. So let's take this for an example right here. Okay, the money, Rang Zit Klang, I can't really pronounce that. Uh, two bedrooms to three bedroom unit for sale. So in um, this currency for the Philippines, I mean, uh, for, the, uh, for Thailand, I'm sorry because uh, I was just looking at the Philippines actually before I started recording. Um, so this looks like it's uh, $1,700,214. That's what it looks like in US. But if we go ahead and translate this over to US, so we'll put in, let's see, one seven hundred two fourteen. Let's see, one seven hundred two fourteen. So that is $33,107.93 for property over in Thailand. Guys, can you imagine getting that? I mean, you rent it out or you fix it up and you sell it, you flip it. You can make a ton of money off of this or um, turn it into like an Airbnb of some sort. You can make so much money a month off of this stuff, guys. So this is just um, an example I want you guys to see. If you can look further over here, there's more deals on other properties. And guys, I mean, it's, it's endless. 
endless opportunities, endless opportunities. So guys, just do like your own research in terms of real estate and just find out uh, what's out there because there is plenty out there, plenty of money to be made in this year. But I just want to talk to you guys again about just these things that you can invest in with your tax return money. So again, we talked about stocks and cryptocurrency and real estate and not just and here's the bonus part not just real estate here in the united states but you can also find nice hot deal properties um, all over the world around the world like turkey belize mexico um, other places you can find real good deals the philippines is another place where you can find some heck of a deal there guys i mean just do your research check it out and I'm telling you guys, that's where it's at because with the things that's going on now and people are losing their jobs or hard to find a job or hard to hang on to a job because this whole mandate thing and it's just a real mess. But guys, so you don't have to be relying on a government, you know, get your own thing going on, get your own business going, your real estate, whatever it is you want to do, guys, you can do it. This is a new year and we have families, we have things that we want to accomplish and you guys can do it. So. This is all for the video. Please, guys, remember to hit the thumbs up. Share this video all across social media. If you don't have social media, share it anyway. Let's make this money in this new year, 2022. And be careful because if you blink your eyes, the year will fly by fast. All right, guys. Peace out. I'm out. Again, Todd, Tasha, and we'll see you in the next, well, I'll see you in the next video.